I am a Civil War firearms historian and collector. We are standing today at the Sharpsburg Armory Shop, uh, which is owned by my friend Bill Shawley. You can see the guns behind me with, with tags on them. Bill collects as well as sells and trades guns. We're going to talk today about Civil War era firearms as involved in Jefferson County, West Virginia. But I also want to talk about the background of these firearms and how they came to be. And specifically, I want to talk about the armory in Harpers Ferry and its role that it played in, in the war. I'm holding in my hand uh, a Charlottesville musket pattern. Uh, in the Civil War era, linear tactics were used. When armies would approach each other, there were two lines of men shoulder to shoulder. They carried muskets, rifles, what have you, and they would march to a front, sometimes within 50 yards of each other, sometimes even closer. In the beginning of the war, the idea was to shoot three times per minute, sometimes four times per minute if you could do that. I personally, over many years, have never mastered that. <laughs> I've got as best as two shots per minute, but I imagine if you drilled all day, and if your officers were succinct in, in what they did, you would be able to achieve that. So just imagine uh, a whole line of men firing and loading three to four times per minute, a hail and a wall of lead constantly. Uh, pretty soon there isn't too many uh, oppositional forces standing, and that's the idea of, of the tactics of the time. The musket was king in everyone's idea. The people who were educated in this country's military academies. Our first military officers understood that to load and fire three times per minute, you had to have a weapon that could easily load and that could quickly take a round and then dispatch it. Um, so what I want to do is quickly discuss this piece that I'm holding in my hand, what it is, and then we're going to go into the reasons why they were favored and then built. Thing to notice first, is that this is a flintlock. And what I mean by that, this is called the cock, and it houses a rock called a flint. Um, this is an ignition system. This piece is called the hammer or the frizzle. Uh, if you look, you see a pan. That's where the flash powder goes. You cannot see it, but there is a small hole in the barrel. That's called the touch hole. Uh, some Confederate soldiers would misname that the torch hole. <laughs> it, it's a good idea. It, 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 it gives you the, the, the purpose of it. It transfers the explosion from the outside of the piece to the interior of the wall of the barrel where the main charge is. And then this piece will fire, hopefully, on a good day without wind, without rain, without snow. Um, starts to give you an idea of the reliability of the flintlock. Uh, that's why when you look at the history of battles, oftentimes what you see is they were fought on the most gloriously beautiful days of the year. That's because the generals all understood that the flintlock was at that time key to loading and firing the musket. So this is the flintlock musket. Uh, we will talk about the whole gun here today, so we're going to talk about it lock, stock, and barrel. If you've ever heard that term or expression, that means the whole thing. And that's what we'll be discussing here. The musket, then we've talked about the brain of the gun. That's the flint lock or the lock part of it. Uh, when it is primed and ready to shoot, you pull the trigger, you should see a shower of sparks. Well, if it works, remember I told you. There you go. So there's the sparks, and ideally if there were powder in that pan, it would ignite. Okay, that's the first part of this you would have an explosion. Now what I did not tell you was how this is loaded. So let's go to the muzzle. You're looking at the muzzle end of this. There's a hole in the barrel. That's where your powder goes. That's also where your ball goes. You also have a ramrod. That piece will ram the ball and the powder down the barrel uh, when it starts to get dirty. To tell you the truth, most of the rounds made for muskets were, were issued to soldiers in a container called a cartridge. I'm holding it in my hand. It's a paper tube or sometimes a skin tube that 
has powder in it, also the ball, and you notice it has a tab. Uh, that's because soldiers of the Civil War period were expected, and even earlier for that matter, to be able to stick it in their mouth and tear this thing off, thus exposing the powder, dumping the powder and the ball down the barrel, and you notice it fits very loosely. That is by design. Remember we said three to four times per minute. You should be able to throw this down the tube without having to use this ramrod very often. And let's say we'll call that a volley every time you fire. Um, this should ignite, should send the ball and the powder, should, should work, and you should get off at least four to three to four shots, hopefully, before it starts to gum up and get sticky and, and get very messy and dirty. Uh, the musket would be a mainstay of the military for a long, long time, as we said. 